Greetings and salutations, uh, listener. This is I, Eric J. Chuck. He joined, as always, by the boy. Yeah. Theoretically. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a it's been a couple weeks, you guys. Stuff's come up. Except it hasn't even really. That's the dumb shit. So week one we missed, and if you guys don't follow us on social, which is fine, uh, you you didn't see my little message. Um, it's like, what was Wednesday? Late Wednesday. And I'm like, oh shit, we forgot to do the podcast. Just, it's not like it's been an emergency or anything. Y'all need to be concerned. But it's, yeah. been, it's been like, just life has been happening and we've, the podcast slipped our minds. Uh, and it was late enough in the week, and I was like, well, yeah, let's just, you know, whatever. Uh, I think I linked the Steam releases featuring Longmire podcast and went about my merry business and was like, well, we'll get it next week. And I was actually, you know, thinking actively, if you guys are, you know, uh, floating around right now, you'll see we just released the Clerics podcast also. Um, and I was like, oh, yeah, we'll do that. We can talk about that. And some other stuff came up as well that we'll, we'll discuss a little bit in this podcast, um, you know, that uh, was exciting news and... There was stuff to talk about. And then Monday happened. And uh, the short version is my work schedule has become weird. Um, So, you know, I spent a lot of time hanging around at home before work. And then uh, I got home after work. And I don't usually work on Mondays, except here recently. I was uh, tired and had napped, actually, because I had a kind of a stressful day at my job. I just kind of went to bed pretty soon after you came home. We almost forgot to take out the trash. Yeah. We were both sitting in the kitchen, and you're like, isn't it trash night? And I'm like, wow, it is, isn't it? That That's usually like a nice mnemonic device for us that we do podcasts on trash night. It's a big thing. I get home. We record the podcast. You take out the trash. Done deal. Didn't happen. Nope. Uh, so, um, yeah. Sorry. Uh, you're getting two podcasts today. Um this one is just kind of a catching up, talking shit. I think the biggest focus, foci, are going to be the uh, League of Legends 10th anniversary and um, WWE 2K20. You have a lot more to say about that second one than I have because you've been following it a lot closer. I have a lot more to say, but God, I think you'll react. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, you know what? We, we like to be a positive podcast. Let's end on a positive note. Let's get into that 2K20 trash nonsense. Yeah, let's start there. All right, so um, y'all know, because you watch a show, we love wrestling. And uh, (laughs) and not fighting. Uh, (laughs) Where's your soda can, bitch? Where are you going to beat me up now? You got nothing. (laughs) Um, Anyway... uh, Every year, man, it's a big, exciting thing to play the new WWE game. And he's not joking. We get hype. We, like, get ready to play. We we try and round out the universe mode of our previous game to, like, a good stopping point. We we get excited to make the dudes in the new system and try out the new stuff. And and it's just... It's something we're both usually pretty excited for, and we almost always buy the game. The only year we didn't was, I believe it was 2K15... Um, when they jumped up consoles and switched developers and, uh... They just needed a year to get back on track. They didn't have female creator wrestlers and they lowered the slots to, like, 30 and, like, a whole bunch of shit was missing that they still haven't put back in and it was like, okay, pass. Like, I wanted to because there was some cool stuff in there, but ultimately it was like, well, what's the point? Yeah, pass. Um, (laughs) And notably, I guess we weren't the only ones because they returned to form the next year. Yeah, uh... So, here we are now. I guess every five years, maybe check maybe, out. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> um, I'd have to look back further in the WWE games history to see if that holds true. But uh, uh, we didn't get a lot of news all year on 2K20. Like, and normally, they start the run-up a lot sooner than they started it. Yeah, like you, June, July, they'll be like, okay, here's the big first information drop. And then they'll do a cool roster reveal video thing. And they... Did that sort of, but but not with the fervor or the polish. Like the... you ever see someone who, like, has made let's call it a let's call it a painting, and it's like, hey, how's that painting going? Uh, it's good. And 
oh, you showed me? No, it's not. It's not done yet. I don't show it to you yet. And then the longer it goes on, the sweatier they look, and the more it, it just you kind of get the sense that they know that there's a problem. <laughs> This is me every night when I try to upload my Inktober drawings going, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. And like the closer it gets to the deadline, the more obviously they clearly know there's a problem. That's kind of what this was like from the removed way I I got into it. Basically. Um, We didn't hear from the devs until uh, uh, Chris Danker, who's a much more popular and handsome YouTuber, um, did an interview with the 2K devs and it was a lot of pre-apologizing. Yeah. Pre-apologizing. And we're really excited for the new features we have. (laughs) So it was a lot of pre-apologizing a lot of look it. All right. Before you see this, here are some things you should know. I don't know if it was enough. Like I'm not asking for these men to be burned at the stake or anything. I'm sure they did their best. God, yeah, given the circumstances, I'm sure they did as good as they could. So basically what happened is Ukes, the people who make the engine and, you know, design all the shit, left. They're going to be going to make another game, I believe, that has nothing to do with WWE. Um, A lot of people think they're going to go make the AEW game. I have heard that's not true. I've heard it's the old AKI people who are making the uh, AEW game. Um, But I don't know. This is all scuttlebug. Ukes left. That actually is fact. For whatever reason, they decided that they were no longer interested in having a relationship with the WWE. Which at first, um, Visual Concepts, the people that did the graphics uh, for the game, and, and were like basically the localization of communication between their designs and Uke's execution, uh, were excited because this meant more creative freedom. They could you know, do things that were too hard to express, you know, not in person. And they could be very... Had a lot of fun with it. And they did have a lot of fun with it. They made some crazy arenas. They're doing all kinds of weird fantasy shit for the DLC packs. I, God, I really want the um, Southpaw Regional Wrestling Arena because it looks my fucking aesthetic. But, um... Here's the problem. (laughs) Alright, so, when you make a video game, it's great to have creative freedom. It's great to be able to, you know, be out there and explore new concepts and do fun fantasy stuff and make cool new stuff and get all the cool, you know, new gimmicks in as soon, you know, as far as you can in. That way they're not out of date by the time the game comes out. That's all great. That's all great. That's super duper. Um, the part where you play a video game has to be good. And I feel like maybe you forgot that. <laughs> so visual concepts are not designers in that sense. They had to hire out to a couple of other teams, and I don't know when they did this, and I don't remember the names of the teams, to help them with that. Because they're not, they don't don't do that part of the programming. They do visuals. Uh, Their visuals also have suffered a bit, depending on the situation. Some characters look really good. Some don't. Some have helmet hair. Most have helmet hair. uh, I I heard somebody played a match with Matt Riddle uh, earlier today. And his hair didn't move. If you don't know, Matt Riddle is a gentleman with long, flowing hair. That's his gimmick. Well, his gimmick is like, bro. But um, the still, the beautiful, long, flowing hair is definitely a key part of his gimmick. He looks like a surfer man. And it just doesn't move. Uh. <laughs> Too strong. Yeah, I guess. It's made of iron. Um, it's got that good gel. And all of the female wrestlers, and everyone except for Dolph Ziggler's ponytail, basically. Uh, it Back to clipping through chests. Uh, let's not talk about Bianca Belair. Um, you can Google the video if you want, if you haven't already seen it. Um, and just a host of other tiny visual nitpick glitches, yeah. like Bobby Roode's coat acquires many folds as he walks down to the ring. Just, it's fractal in there. The inside of Bobby Roode's coat is a hellscape. <laughs> and he's not the only one. That's just like one of the many clips you can go watch. And um, I've had reports of people who are not having an issue. But I've also had plenty of reports of people that are. And a lot, a lot of the YouTube personalities in the, the WWE 2K community are like, this is not a good game. Happy to praise the new shit, the new arenas, the creativity, the fun challenges, but... 
And the 2K games are never perfect. We no. don't expect perfection. Well, and that's the thing, too. And you have to remember this. Every year, I feel like I battle with the community, at least in my head, because I try not to post comments on the internet. Never tweet. It's a good rule. I try and follow it. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, every year I see people going, Why didn't they do this? It just takes a press of a button. You just do it. It's that easy. And it's not. It's not. And, and this you know game, how I know it's not? They didn't do it. This game is living <laughs> fucking proof. <laughs> These guys had to basically, from a foundation, rebuild their entire game in less than a year. This is what you get. Yeah, this, this is, is what you get. This is a rebuilding year. In sports, it happens occasionally where the whole franchise blows up and you got to take a couple years to just build back up. That's what this is. This is a rebuilding year. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to buy that game. <laughs> I'm not either. Um, before we move on to League of Legends, I would like to share with you a couple of my favorite glitches. I'm excited, I'll say, for next year. Especially if they keep all the new creator wrestler parts well, and all the new arena parts. Yeah, well, you know, I, next year when they've had some time to publish, you know, to if they weren't being pushed to do a one a year, I feel like we wouldn't have gotten this game. I agree. And I think, I think honestly... One a years can be kind of toxic anyway. They are. Uh, I, I really think WWE games should move to... Games as a service model? Yes. Like Killer Instinct, like... Hey, we made a bunch of new parts. You want to buy them? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm stupid. I'll pay the money. Look, if you want to make a bunch of new creator wrestler parts, that's what I I don't spoiler alert people who make WWE games. I don't I don't give a shit about your about the actual wrestlers. I play them for like a week and then I just we make creative wrestlers and we wrestle with those. If you want to make packs of new creative parts and just ship them into the game, it's a digital game. I don't get a regular copy. It's all on my hard drive anyway. I'll buy them. I'll pay 5.99 for 20 new pants. Or give us the new wrestlers with their new parts. I'm always excited for the DLC because we get new music, new Trons, new entrances, new moves, new, you know, actual, like, clothes. New music I would kill for, like, if you guys want to get into licensing. That's expensive, I know. Or, like, have the WWE band just make a bunch of music. And I don't think WWE has a band anymore. They don't have the CFOs anymore? No, they let CFOs go. That's dumb. I agree. Dumb! How are you going to get rid of CFOs and Jim Johnston? Like, How are you going to get rid of people who make good music? What the fuck are you doing? Anyway, um, but, uh, yeah, uh, just like, I, give me more things to make a, to make a better version of that game. And then it'll have like a two, three, four year life cycle where you can actually go to work and make a better game for the next time. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like, I'm not a fucking video game business person. Maybe that's just not tenable for the audience. Maybe they don't think the wrestling audience will buy into that. I certainly think... I wouldn't buy blind loot boxes. So Yeah. Uh, this is 2K Games and this is Vince McMahon somewhere along the line. Uh, they just assumed the game sale would get them more money. Yeah. So. Um... <clears throat> now anyway. Uh, my favorite glitches here so far. Um, let's see here. Uh, adding a superstar to a division in universe takes away another superstar. <laughs> the balance equivalent exchange, the laws of alchemy. Uh, the loading screen for matches and create an entrance mode get caught in an infinite loop when using a superstar with custom logos. Oh, that's wow! Like, all right, guys, I know you didn't have much time, but did you hire QA at all? Rowan's beard doesn't appear sometimes. I want no. I want to see that one. I want to see. I want to see the beardless Rowan. Managers multiply. God, does he have a face underneath, or is it just teeth? God. Is it just teeth? I hope it's just teeth. Um. After buying Curtis Axel's beard item in my career, all of one user's unlocked facial hairs only showed up pink in cutscenes and matches, no matter what. Like this is video games, okay? You have to look at you have to look at even Skyrim and go they managed to cobble together all this code and make a game that functions this well. Praise be to them. <laughs> look, all right. I know I hold Bethesda to too low a bar, but I'm going to be honest with you. If I went to the underground in Riften when they did that thing, you could change your face with the face sculptor mm -hmm. and I gave my character a beard, it didn't make all the other beards pink. <laughs> Pink also. What the fuck? It's specifically pink, yeah. Uh, God, and dude, then there's just... small stuff that's just like oversight, like rush stuff. Like uh, Billy Kay has Zelina Vega's moveset. 
Um, the Hardy Boys entrance music in Create an Entrance is listed as Evolution. Just... Yeah, that's just, there wasn't an actual final QA pass. Uh, lots of stuff still locked behind things. On the Champions page in Universe Mode, every slot is just Kofi as WWE Champion. I see that as a feature. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the developers going, we don't like Brock Lesnar. Kofi is all the champions. <laughs> Belts don't appear on larger body types and get clipped inside the character. Please note, larger doesn't mean, oh, you've made a huge fat fatty. It means, like... Larger than average. <laughs> like, it means if the Big Show is your champ... If Brock Lesnar's your champ, the belt's going to be sticking halfway. I've seen pictures of this shit. Brock Lesnar's waist is small. He doesn't do leg day. You don't know where I live, Brock. <laughs> um, the, the hair and clothing stretching to max resolution, as we talked about with Bobby Roode's coat. Uh, and um, let's see. You can't switch to and control your tag partner anymore. You can't change the color of face paint anymore. Uh, elimination Chamber and Ladder uh, and Money in the Bank post-match celebrations are gone. So you win the match and it's over. <laughs> uh, the option for superstar head height has been removed, but head width remains. <laughs> what, what, what the fuck? No. All right. No. You know what that is? I know what that is. Yeah, that's... that's that is head height was breaking something, so they disabled it and said, we'll come back to it later, and then they never did. Luke Harper's theme is a three-second loop that starts over and over and is louder than all other sounds of the game. <laughs> and of course, less hilariously, but still a thing, uh, Create a Championship is not in the game right now because every time they tried to have it in the game, it crashed everything. They're trying to patch it in at a later date. Many people believe that patch is never coming. <laughs> <sighs> Oof! This is the Assassin's Creed Unity of WWE games. This is the Duke Nukem forever. Of no, no, that's not true. Shit shipped on time. <laughs> like, the problem with Duke is that, isn't it a bunch of glitches? It basically didn't have many glitches. This game shipped on time one way or a fucking other. It did. Yeah. Uh, good God. I, there's so much cool shit. Just like looking at the creator wrestler parts, it got me real hype and it really made me want the game. And then, and then it turns out it was bad. It turns out it was <laughs> God awful. I, I, there's a guy on Reddit. Um, if you go to the WWE games, Reddit, who uh, posted a gif of Larry David, uh, and it said, uh, when I committed to not buying WWE 2K20 because I heard about all the things. And then I came home from work and my wife got it for me as my early Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> Turns to look at the camera uh, credits. Which, that was almost me, because my dear sweet girlfriend was very cleverly asking around about it, and I was like... Don't do that! And don't! Please don't waste your money. It's scary bad. Now, all that said, when May rolls around and they shut down the 2K19 servers... We might buy it anyway, just because, well, the servers are shut down and I want to make creative wrestlers. And maybe by then it'll be patched. Maybe by then it'll be a functional video game. Or yeah. we might just wait for the next one. Or we might just wait for the next one. Or we might have to wait two years. I don't know. But, um... Yeah, that's WWE 2K20. God, why? Because they had to ship on time. They had to ship on time. Yep. So let's let's go into good news. Uh, interesting, really interesting, cool news that is so coincidental for me, because it like I recently got back into playing League. I've really been, I've been enjoying playing the League quests. since fucking 2012. Mm -hmm. Turns out, not the full 10 years, but goddamn. And like I recently got back into it just because I can get happy. It's installed on my computer, and I happen to want to play video games without having to get up. Uh, <laughs> So I, I started playing it again, and then they've just been doing lots of really fun, cool shit for the last little while, and then the 10-year thing happened, and not only doing fun stuff in-game, there's a lot of really cool shit that they're working on. Yeah. Um, first of all, they're earning their S. That's that's good to know. Yeah, they're Riot Games. They're working on more than... they. I don't mean TFT. That's... Mm -mm. They're working on actual video games uh, separate from League so that they are not Riot Game. Uh, Legends of Runeterra is a free-to-play, uh, LOL-themed CCG. 
Yeah, that seems like a game more than auto chess to me. Oh yeah, I will probably play it for a little while until they establish a meta and I'm no longer interested, just the way I did with Hearthstone. I, that's kind of how card games work. Yep. Uh, I've, I watched some stuff, uh, watched some league YouTubers I follow uh, and their coverage on it. <clears throat> um, it's been described by at least a couple of them as like a mixture between Hearthstone and Magic. Cool. I like both those games. Um, and the card acquirement <clears throat> is on a unique, it's a unique structure. It's not loot boxes. Right. It's not packs. No. It is a it's a track where you play the game and you get cards, but cards from specific factions that you can change and get different cards. That's neat. That's rewarding play without blind packs, which are the devil. That'd be awesome because if I was sitting there going, I want to play a Zon and just Zon, please stop giving me Piltover cards. Then you can just do that. Yeah, that's awesome. Um and what's more is they they want you to get cards quickly. Because the two guys who the two guys who are like the lead designers did a little video about it, and they said that for them the the best part of a card game is seeing the different combinations and cool things that are possible in the card game, which is hard to fucking do if you have to play for three hundred hours to get the cards. Well, and if you get the cards quick enough, I might not dip out when a meta settles in because my problem with Hearthstone is they they started the rotating, uh, you know, what cards are legal thing that Magic. So has you can to do. just never keep up. Uh, yeah, it's just too hard to get cards without spending money. I get it. That's what you want me to do. But there's not really an alternative unless I'm playing I have spent hundreds of dollars on League just since I came back. I've yeah, it's, you know, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> uh, like, over, over the whole League playthrough, they've gotten a lot of money out of me. More than Magic the Gathering ever did. Yeah. So I think they understand. It's free to play. It they, they want you to get things quickly because they know that if you like and are having fun with the game, you're more likely to stick around and buy shit. Um, a lot of this stuff is coming out next year. Uh, a lot of this stuff is coming out. Question mark, question mark, question mark. A lot of stuff is coming out. Look, we're working on it, okay? Uh, basically, the stuff with titles is next year. Um, uh, like Arcana, uh, an animated series based on League of Legends that looks like the origin story for... Um, uh, yeah, the, the, for at least Jinx. Jinx and Vi, probably. Uh, says every legend has a beginning, mm-hmm. was, was one of their taglines, which is neat. I like that idea. I love the League characters. I'm still butthurt about all the times they've rewritten League's lore, but whatever. Fuck it. I like these characters, and I'd like to see them do stuff. Uh, it's been long enough that they're starting to get the comic book effect for me, and I'm just like, well, whatever. It's just the new one. Yep, yeah, that's fine. It's <laughs> oh, Okay, you're doing another crisis? All right, we're doing mm-hmm, this. Okay. All right. Sky's red? All right. Oh, the, the Watchmen characters are here now? Okay, Dope. Sure, fine. <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it, I like Zaun a lot, and there's a lot of stuff going on in Zaun, so I'm very interested. Usually League shit tends to focus on Demacia and Noxus. That's and, the great conflict of the setting, yeah. is, is the war. So I, I'm really excited. And I, and I actually like the change they made that Zaun is underneath Piltover. Like, that's cool. That is cool. I yeah. didn't know that. That's yeah, cool as shit. Like earlier this year, I think, or maybe late last year, they, they made it so that uh, Zon is a separate city, but it's like underneath Piltover. It's it's it's, it's the Midgar. slums. It's Midgar in the slums. Yeah. Oh, um, that's neat. Oh, yeah, it's really fucking cool. Uh, it's just great places to tell stories. I've always loved League setting, so I, I have borrowed heavily from League in my uh, role playing game, actually. So. Um, we're also getting, for those of you who give a shit, Team Fight Tactics is coming to mobile as its own separate thing. I don't ever. I don't either. And I never will. I'm sorry. The game, ju- the, the idea just doesn't appeal to me. Um, again, for those of you who care about the lore, uh, Senna is our next champ. I care about that deeply. Yeah. Like, I almost bought Lucian with money because Senna is the next champ. That's, I, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I'm I'm very happy about that. She looks cool. I really like the mark putting, like, moving things forward that's neat yeah they're gonna have to redo all lucian's voice lines <laughs> um we're also getting a return to the regular earth mode i don't know how much i'll play it because regular earth got toxic as hell and uh, league agrees that's why they haven't brought back regular earth in forever um they prefer all random earth but all random earth is almost more toxic because you just always lose in champ select or win in champ select it has nothing to do there's no strategy at all it's, at least in regular, if it's toxic, but there is a way to win. There is a way to have any input on whether or not you will win this game. With error, if there's not. You you press the button, you roll the RNG calculator, and you will either, and you, and the game determines whether you win or lose right then. I'd rather be fated to lose in a quick game where no one's on my back because they know how it is than 
have every chance of winning in a long game where some guy is calling me trash the entire time because I didn't pick the meta-approved characters. What, You'd like, rather the choice be taken from your hands so that no one has any grounds to bitch at you? Basically, because if they're given the slightest ground, an inch, a, a Mega Man before a pit amount of ground to stand on, to bitch at me, they will. And yeah, it's that's like just it's it's well yeah, but it's even more violently. Last time I played, which is Earth, so weird because it's supposed to be the fun mode. What yeah, the fuck, and that, guys? That Why are you taking nuts. this so seriously? It's fucking Earth, right? So I don't. I might dip in there and be like, oh yeah, okay, goodbye. Honestly, <laughs> I, I have I, for me, I don't care. One well, of the reason I like this more than Air Earth isn't that you know I, I'm fated to win or lose. That is better for me. I like, I feel like that's probably better as a, like a design choice, but. I, I don't give a shit if I win Earth matches. I just want to play the champions I like yeah. in Earth. And I have a lot more champions than I have champions I like. <laughs> Especially with all the changes that happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, you, you could give me, like, new ga- new Gangplank. Oh, thanks. Super. Yeah, I know he's broken. I hate him, so I don't care. Um, you do get re-rolls in Earth, but, like, eh. Yeah. Anyway. Um, they did a huge balance pass on this, so... Maybe it won't be as bad. Maybe there won't be as much of a meta. Or at least maybe I'll get to play for a little while before the meta settles in and everyone gets mad. Yep. I mean, Zed will be the meta. He is, <laughs> well, I own Zed and know how to play him now, so he whatever. Is, he is eternally the meta in Earth. He is n- fucking unstoppable. Uh, Lol Wild Rift is coming to mobile and console. This is not a port of the PC game. It's designed for the individual platforms they're on. Um, I, yeah, I saw like the video where they had people playing... It looks like it's designed for mobile play, which is neat, but, like, I don't know that League's a good game for mobile. I've never really enjoyed MOBAs on mobile. I played a couple of, um... They're just, they're too involved. Yeah. I need, for a mobile game, not that I do much mobile gaming, for some reason it gives me anxiety. I've, I, don't, I don't really know why. But for me, a, a mobile game would need to be something that I can put down at, like, a moment's notice. Sure. Yeah, that seems exactly... And I can't do that in a multiplayer game where if, oh shit, I got a phone call, I'm going to ruin nine other people's good time? No. On the PC, I'm already in my I'm already in my house, in my chair, not planning on going anywhere. I can make plans for that. If I'm on my phone, here's a hint. I'm probably not I'm either in bed, and I'm not gonna I'm gonna be fucking in bed, or I'm out of my house or on the toilet. It's probably if I'm really done good. pooping, I'm not going to sit around and wait for you to push, asshole. It's a good uh, flow into um, modern sensibilities. Not as many people need a PC, um, whereas everyone is probably going to have a mobile device of some kind. That's fair. That's fair. And perhaps this is just me being a boomer in that I, I, not, I don't do mobile gaming. It gives me anxiety. I do mobile gaming, but I probably won't do this. I might check it out, but like... It's on consoles, too, and I think that's a cool idea, too. Uh, I, again, I'm not really committed to playing this, so whatever. I play on PC. That, that's fine. Um, it's where all my stuff is. Uh, more exciting, I feel. Um, Project Alf. What an interesting name. Uh, Project A is a tactical character-based FPS from Riot. It is not related to League so far, and it is not like Overwatch. It looks more like Apex if it wasn't... Uh, Battle Royal. <laughs> Wasn't a PUBG. <laughs> a PUBG, yeah. It looks like... It, honestly, it's early in development, so it just fucking looks like Team Fortress 2. But, <laughs> like, it it just looks like a shooter. It looks like a, a multiplayer shooter. It's yeah. too early in development to really know anything sure. about it. But it looks like the characters have abilities. You shoot guns. It's not in the LOL setting, so, I mean, like, it's just basically down to how much I trust Riot Game as a Or how good it looks, you know. <laughs> um, Project L is a fighting game in the LOL setting that's in super early development. They showed off a little clip of uh, Ari fighting Darius. This is legit. I, I have to stop myself every day from buying all the fighting games. I still don't have Samurai Showdown. I still don't have the Power Rangers fighting game. There's a bunch of others that I want, but I just don't have the time in my life to play. Why must you add another to the pile? Basically. Like I'll buy this though. I, yeah, I mean, look, looks, I'm, I'm just, if it's not crap, yeah, um, probably, yeah, just just to play the characters. And there's Project F, which has no visuals about it. It's a very early development project about a potential multiplayer experience exploring Runeterra. 
Which is vague as fuck. Yeah, I'd, I'd like a genre. Um, <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> Unless it's a walking simulator. and then It's uh, not. They had some footage. Oh, did they? Yeah, the, someone playing Blitzcrank, and he was walking around, and all his punches, he like... His little fist would come out on tiny cords and he would like swing them around and it was walking around and had a very cutesy art style. It was, yeah. uh, it kind of reminded me of, you know that Tomb Raider game they did that was only on like mobile or whatever where you were, it was like an isometric top down. Okay. Kind of like that is what it looked so like. So like Lolo. Uh Yeah, I guess. But like, it didn't seem as involved as a Diablo. <clears throat> I really like the word lolablo. <laughs> so I'm going to hope that's what it is. Uh, we've also got a documentary coming, um, League of Legends Origins. I believe that's supposed to drop next year. Um, and League of Legends Esports Manager, which is supposed to drop next year. I don't give a shit, but I'm sure someone will. I mean, yeah, someone's buying all those fucking football manager <clears throat> sure. games. Sure. Um, and of course, we're in the middle of their 10-year uh, celebration. You get all kinds of free presents. When I log off and do these podcasts and get them all, you know, ready to upload and upload them, then I'm going to play me some League. I'm going to get two first wins. I'm going to get a bunch of tat, and I'm going to be very excited about it. Or right. violently disappointed. Are you on the team T- TFT tat? Is that what you're on? Or are you on the free th- bunch of orange essence and then skins? Those are the two I have to get. Nice. <clears throat> I got my Hey, free... those two go together really well. Yeah, they do. They, the, they were hyping it up on Twitter. Um so, yeah. uh, the, the free tat is really fun. Just gives you a reason to log in and play every day. Uh, the, the final reason is is uh, anniversary. Oh yeah, I'm getting anniversary. Oh god, yes, please give get, it to me. I am getting mum says it's my turn on the Xbox, Timo. <laughs> Timo is my best friend. <laughs> he is the greatest goddamn thing. He is a uh, gift to the League of Legends. <laughs> that he's not already a meme is a travesty. I don't yeah, like. Man, sometimes I hope he does a poison cloud instead of like fire. Sure. Sometimes Riot games they make me go, mm, Riot, why you do? I, and then, I, I I literally bought Riot points just to buy Little Devil Teemo. Teemo is Satan, and I love him. And then sometimes Riot games you give me something that I didn't even know I wanted, but I need. Yeah, little. Oh yeah. I don't even fucking play Annie. I've already got Goth Annie and a bunch of Annie skins. I, I don't have even like want. four fucking Annie skins. I don't care. I'm getting Annie. I need him. <laughs> I need my big Timo. <laughs> I need I need Swolmo. I need fucking Brock Timo Lesnar. Oh, I wonder if the championship belt phases through his body. Eat, sleep, giggle, repeat. <laughs> Eat, sleep, giggle, repeat. <sighs> I think more than any other podcast, it, the following is true. Everything's better when nerds talk about it. Fuck it.